If you're defining your React props like this, instead of actually using TypeScript utility types in your favor, like this one, for example, or this one, then you're definitely doing it the wrong way. So in this video, we're gonna explore the right way to use TypeScript with React using hidden and magic utility types and cheat sheets. All right, so the first one in here is how to properly use props with TypeScript. So for instance, in here, let's imagine you've got this simple React component in here, it's called the card component, and it has like a normal props in here, so it's props, card props, and it extracts, you know, the props in here as you regularly do, so you do the destructuring of the props from like rest props in here and the class name, and here you're simply returning a div, like a normal div in here. You're just extracting it using the class name in here with a bunch of other Tailwind CSS class names, and you're passing the rest of the props in here. So anything, although, you know, then the class name here, like for example, like an on click or event handler, like whatever the div element is usually takes, like the, the standard div element from React in HTML, whatever the props you actually already takes, we just want to pass those exactly as is. And of course, for doing that, what you actually usually do in here, you just do an interface you do card props in here and you stop putting things together. Like for example, the class name here that we need to use. Then if maybe you want to pass in other stuff like the children, title, on click, maybe you want to do on hover, like whatever other props in here that the div originally accepts in here, like, you know, the standard props that a div element already accepts, then you have to type everything, right? I mean, that's a little too much, don't you think so? Well, likely for us, actually TypeScript and React brings us a really nice utility type in here that's gonna help us a lot, which is like using react.html attributes, then you pass in like whatever element in here you wanna extract the HTML attributes from, which is HTML div element in here, and gonna have all the props in here instead of the card props. But this is not as good as you might think because I already did a short about this one and a lot of people said, oh, this is not as good. I know this is not like the perfect solution, but this works 90% of the times, but definitely there's a better one compared to this one. So instead of using these two in here, or you're gonna go ahead and do like got two options, whether you do like, oh, for example, interface card props extends and you do reacts component props. And here you give it like the name of the elements you want. For our case is div. You can do like input, text area, whatever. And this will bring you all the component props in here you need. And all the component props in here are gonna have like ref, children, everything is gonna be included. Or the better approach in here is to be a little more specific about what you're doing and use this like component props without ref. So for example, we want only the props in here without specifically grabbing the ref of that one. We can use this one or maybe you can do with ref if you want to specifically do ref. It's actually way much better than just doing component props in here because this one includes everything. So this is a little more specific and this actually what React Docs always recommends. But either way, using this or the other one here is way much better than just typing everything from scratch by yourself. And of course, as I said before, later on, on the card in here, you can actually use it however you want. You can do like, oh, mouse over, uh, on mouse over, you can do whatever other props the div element already takes, and you can pass them through to the card in here easily. Now, the second part is generic components. So if you're familiar with TypeScript generic types, like it allow you to use a type or a generic type like T in here, and you can customize it, then it just makes it a little more general and can be used pretty much anywhere just by passing the type. The same thing in here can go for React. Of course, using the magic of TypeScript. So for instance, in here, let's say we've got this function component here that's called a carousel. And what it takes in here, it takes a generic type. So always when you find these two little brackets in here in between them, there is like a capital case character. Most of the times you're gonna find a T in here, you most likely gonna be dealing with a generic type. Now, we actually extract the props in here. We've got them defined on the top in here, like items and render item. And here we're doing props and still we're passing the generic type to the props because the props in here is gonna still use the generic type in here, for example, to define what is the actual type of these items. So it's going to do T of an array in here. And it's gonna also use that inside of the render item in here to be rendering everything. So it's gonna be, you know, a single item in here is gonna have a type of T. As cool as we've got the component here, we're just doing whatever state in here that doesn't matter, we're just throwing off a couple of other functions either to move forward or backward on the carousel. And simply in here on the render function, we've got two buttons in here to move previously or to the next, you know, image in here or carousel sort of slide. And we've got like a render item in here, we pass it like whatever item we're currently on. I mean, that's pretty generic. And this carousel particularly, because we're just doing it this way in here where we've got like a render function in here that can be provided through props. So you're just giving a little more room for people to like, you know, use the carousel in here in a more of a generic way and pass their own render function, render that however they want. We only control how we move 
between you know the previous slide or previous section to the next one. All right, so what about like the actual use cases of this carousel? So let's imagine here we've got the first use case. Let's say we actually just have a sliding. So we want to like render a bunch of images, you know, carousels is like for images where you click backward and forward. And let's say we've got just like a simple interface in here that has an ID, image URL and a caption. And this will just allow us to render a bunch of images. And for the objects in here, we're just doing, you know, the same thing in here, like ID, image URL, just, you know, finding in here an example of three images or particularly the three slides. Now, inside of the application in here, we got, you know, H1 in here, we're using the carousel and particularly you're passing in like the generic type because before we're using generic type, now we're passing in what is the exact type that's gonna be using through this carousel, which is a slide. Now items in here, I'm gonna take a type of slide and they're gonna immediately become, as you in here, a slide type because, you know, that generic type is gonna flow all the way to the props in here. And is this item is gonna become a slide. The render item is gonna be a slide too. And here, this one is gonna, you know, use type inference from TypeScript and it's going to tell us immediately that this will be a type of slide. And now using the magic of TypeScript, you can do slide dot whatever and it's immediately going to know that this will be a slide type and it just lists for you all the properties that are available. All right, that's that's pretty cool. So let's just go ahead into that the second use case in here for our use case. So we got like another interface in here. Let's say we want to use that carousel component to render something different from a slide. We want to render like user testimonials where you know you got like a bunch of cards showing the user testimonials or what the user says about our service and you know it's just stuff like that. So we got like reviewing here a testimonial. We got the text of what the user is actually saying or the customer was actually saying and the author in here thumbnail URL and then name of the author. And again, just like a bunch of examples in here using review, which is an array again, we're going to render in a bunch of stuff. And for using that inside of the carousel, we're just doing carousel review in here, passing the items of your view again, and we've got like the review. Now, the same thing, because that's going to be you know, a type of review using type inference, that works fine. Now, we have our carousel more of like, instead of like just a normal React component, it became an actual generic component. Now, because this can be used literally anywhere, but just passing like whatever type you can use, you are actually capable of just render items, whatever you want, render whatever type of like carousel stuff from like slides, reviews or testimonials to different things. So that's pretty good. Now let's imagine we've got this carousel, but it's not a generic type. It's more of like a fixed type. Let's say this carousel in here only takes a type of a slide. Okay, so it doesn't take a generic type in here. It doesn't know what that generic type is. It just like slide in here, slide in here. Um, we don't care about this one either. And this one doesn't take a generic type again. I mean, everything should still be the same inside of the carousel in here, nothing changes. But if you go down in here, because this one is a type of slide, this should work, right? Because we don't pass this one anymore. But this should be working because this is our, you know, the exact same type. But down here, you're going to find, oh, there is an error. If we try to go inside of it, it's going to tell like, like here, going to complain items in here, type of review is not a symbol of type slide because that's not generic, that carousel in here only works for slide times and it doesn't work for you know anything other than that. I mean, you can use it that way if you just wanna look on that components, but for generic components, it can help you a lot to you know create one component, use it pretty much everywhere inside of your application and all of that using the magic of TypeScript with React. Well, the third cool feature in here you can use in React from TypeScript is type narrowing. Let's imagine here we got two different distinctive types in here. First is a button props in here with children and on click event handler and we got another type in here like is called anchor props with different stuff now let's say you've got another component called clickable and this component either renders an anchor element or a button element depending on the props it receives so you can actually use type narrowing really really well in here with typescript and react and it can actually help you a lot to identify the props very easy so let's say in here we created this simple function in here is props for anchor elements and here what it returns Returns, it returns props, it uses the is keyword, which is a very important here for type narrowing. Is keyword is basically just going to identify whether it's this type or the other type. And you can imagine this as booleans, but for types. So this is going to be, oh, with props, A is going to be anchor props. So, so this one to be correct, so you got to go ahead and check, oh, if HRF in here, N 
props, then there's going to be an anchor props. Otherwise, it's actually a bottom props. And here, of course, the props it takes in here, it could be either bottom props or anchor props. So as simple as that, we can later on go ahead and use like is props for anchor elements. We pass in the props we've got. So if it is actually returning true, if this actually evaluates to true in here, we're going to go ahead and render an anchor element. And these props in here are going to be anchor props. Like for instance, if you go inside in here, inside the if statement in here, what this one is, you know, it's a true. So if you do props dots it's clear in here, it just like gives you only the props of the anchor image, which is children, HRF, RL, everything like we have on the top in here. But on the other hand in here, if you do it on the button inside of the button, we only got children and on click, which is coming from the button props. And last but not least are event handlers, because event handlers are very important in react and we pretty much use them every single time on pretty much every single component. I find out like a lot of people are missing these features from like probably using event handlers from TypeScript with react and TypeScript. So for instance, in here, let's say we've got this interface in here that's called magic props, it takes two event handlers, and of course, on click and on change. And of course, to properly type that one using TypeScript, we use react dot mouse event handler in here. And this is because it's an on click. So it's like a mouse, like event in here. So we do mouse event handler, and we give it exactly what is the type of the elements we're using in here is HTML bottom elements for a case. The second thing in here for on change, because you know, on change is usually for input and text areas and stuff like where has a keyboard input interaction. So you're going to do change event handler in here. And you got like HTML input elements, you know, for the elements we're going to be using here, maybe you can replace this text area or something. Now, the cool part about this is like whenever you define your like event handlers, like for example, handle click or the handle change, and you only do this type in here, this like magical type, which is react mouse event handler in here, and you pass it in the type. Now the events from the parameters in here is going to automatically take the right type for you. In this case, it's going to be react dot mouse events, and it's going to take HTML button elements mouse event. So inside of that one, you can do event and you can access whatever properties or methods that are inside of that one belongs to a specific button. And the same thing in here for handle change in here, because we do a handle change and we are using the change event handler. Now the event in here inside of the parameter is going to be a change event and it's going to be tied into like an HTML input element. Again, inside of that event, you will be able to access stuff specifically made for the input element. And now you don't have exactly to go ahead every single time and you type your stuff in here. For example, you do a uh, react, this has to be a mouse event in the element or events, and you want to pass in HTML or input. This is not a mouse one, but this is more of a change events. And you got to do this every single time. It's a little time, but it's way much better just to use event handlers in here. And typing free is going to happen for you with React and TypeScript. And it's just going to just lift off the headache. Now, if you're looking for learning resources to learn more about how to properly use TypeScript with React and get the most out of it, there's actually really cool resources starting with like, for example, this really cool, awesome website, which is like a documentation and a cheat sheet for React and TypeScript. It's called react typescript up, and you can find it on GitHub as well. So once you do get started, you're going to find all the stuff to do the recommendations from like getting started of how to properly use, you know, TypeScript with React and hooks, uh, type in default class components, so many cool stuff. So I use this like whenever I have a headache, I just come over here and try to figure it out for you know, how you know, like what is the best type to use. And instead of that, what I use also like different packages in here, I try to install my you know, TypeScript React project here. First one is TypeZoo or TypeZoo in here. And it hasn't been updated in five years. I know it's a little outdated, but it still has really legendary types and you can use. You've got the TS tool bit, which is, you know, hasn't been updated in three years as well, but it has a tremendous amount of like types and utility types. You can just install this package and you can import them like this and you can start using them. There's actually one, it has like the table of contents from booleans, numbers, um, union types in here, strings, functions, so many cool stuff. Of. And last one using here another one which frequently updated and I'm super in love with this one is utility types. So it's called the utility types it's like on, on GitHub in here. It's open source. I'm gonna leave all the links in here down in the description. I hope I don't forget. But anyway, guys, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed and catch you hopefully in another video tutorial.